Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday evening. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me tonight. Oh, got people coming in. Sometimes it's hard for me to see. Hi, everybody. Oh, got all kinds of people. Hello. Can everybody hear me okay? Second, I got to get this thing to scroll down. All kinds of people here. Hi. So a bunch of us got together and did some sewing today. I'll have to play show and tell so you can see. Oh, but we're having little thumbs up. So hello, everybody. A second here. I just got something strange on my phone. I'm reading what it says here. Oh, okay. Something from the website. I'm like, what did we just get? <laughs> it's like, who sent me money? <laughs> it was from the website from the store. Okay. Oh, who else? Hello, everybody. All kinds of people on here. Yeah, my phone keeps dinging, so sorry. Okay, so we a bunch of us got together and did some sewing today. And um, we, we are working on Broomhilda's Bakery. And I'm not, um, I didn't take that today. I wanted to work on the stuff for next weekend for the event. And um, I wanted to try out some of the stuff that wasn't, that I hadn't done yet, that I hadn't made. So I'm kind of blurry here. Sometimes if you just, you just have to kind of make it focus. I don't know why the camera's not focusing tonight. Hopefully it's not, there we go. Um, but I wanted to try out some of the projects. They didn't send all of them when they sent the projects for the event. So um, this is one of the ones they didn't send. It's not completely done yet, but it's a little... It's a little wall hanging that says laundry, loads of fun, and has little appliques on it. And it's a multi-hooped little design that we did in like the 6 by 10 hoops, and we hooped it three times. So I made that today. I thought that was cute. I have to put some binding on it. And then we did, um, and there was this cute little um, dog scarf. You know, you put on the little dog um, collars, and it says adopt me. So I thought it was so cute. And you use, I don't know if you can see it, but it's puffy foam. You use puffy foam on it. Isn't that cool? So that was one of the little projects. I like that. And then they sent this one, but I wanted to, okay, so, you know, I saw these this cubby on that, that class, and I'm like, okay, so how can you possibly get this cubby into a home machine? And I did it. Look, see? So you hoop this, you take all the stuffing out of him, and you hoop him in a standard 4x4 four four hoop, and it holds him in there, and then you just sew him. And it, it turned out great. And even I even did this in my little uh, 1500D, my 15-year-old machine, and I didn't have any trouble at all. So it turned out really cute. So I did this. And then there's a couple of other projects I haven't made yet. But the um, So next weekend, we'll be making six projects. And um, everybody will be making, there'll, there'll be, you know, six at the table. And the, all the things at the table will be um, donated to local charities. And then everybody will have a kit with every project in it to go home and make on their own. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. The, the projects are different and um, not the same as a lot of the other, you know, like I need a good design and stuff. So these are really cute. But I just thought this was darling. And I had fun making it. It's a drat, one of those cubbies. So, and you can get these. I found these on All Stitch. So if you like these and you want to make more of these, um, I found them on allstitch.net is the company. And they had them and he's called Jerry Giraffe. So <laughs> I found them. So anyway, th that's what I did today. And everybody else was working on Broomhilda. I've kind of got a lot of my blocks done. So I decided to work on those. I kind of wanted to know what I was doing next weekend when I when I went to, uh, you know, help everybody. So it's kind of nice to have seen the projects or know what they're going to be doing. So, okay. So tonight, 
<laughs> yeah, I get my little smiley faces. So tonight, um, we're going to do some quilting in des using Design Center and IQ Designer. And I haven't done one of these classes before. This um, method is specific to either like the Dream Machines, the Destinies, um, the Luminaires, the Solarises, and then the new machine um, that has this in it. Um, the Oh, Mitzi, I'm so sorry yeah, that you should have seen your refund. Um, she sent me a thing saying that she did it, so you should have seen a refund. Um, we're going to do something in the spring. We're doing a needed good design in the spring. Uh, we're just getting the dates set up, and then I think um, a Floriani stabilizer event in the spring. The spring and like early summer. So those are the next two things. Like something in, in March maybe and maybe in May. Can't remember. We just got the dates set up. Oh, thank you, Jan. So anyway, um, we're going to do this. This method is specific to the machines that have the design center feature in them. And what that is, it's like an auto digitizing feature that is right in the machine. And then the new machines um, that Brother and Baby Lock have, it's called the Altair and the Stellaire. Those also have this. So all of these um, machines have this ability. I know not all of you have machines that will do this, but um, I think you'll find it very interesting to see how this works because it actually does work very well. Um, I did my Jingle All the Way, Kimberbell Jingle All the Way quilt this way. I quilted the entire quilt in the embroidery machine. And I um, then I did the border. The, the new machines have a border function, and I did the border that way. I'll put a picture of that up on, this, on the group um, after the class, so you can see it a little closer. I think if you make the picture bigger, you can see it a little bit better. Um, and what we're going to do tonight is a table runner. So the original table runner that I thought this way we could get the whole thing done. So the original table runner I put up in the group is this little jingle all the way table runner. So this one was from the Kimberbell jingle all the way um, quilt book. They always have a couple of extra little, um, you know, projects in the back. So this was the little project in there. And so I put this up, but I didn't have any more fabric left. So um, for the class, we're actually going to quilt this one. This one is from Hello Sunshine. So it has this darling little um, watermelon. And then it had tumbler blocks in the center. So we're going to quilt this tonight. And I've never done this. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. If any of you have ever done this, this is called ruching along the end of the uh, or the edge of the watermelon, and you put this on after it's quilted, and you like um, gather fabric in a kind of a zigzag pattern, and then it makes this little ruching. Isn't that darling? And I just glued it on. Um, I didn't figure I'd ever wash this, so I just glued it, glued it on or hot glued it on. But this is what we're going to do tonight. Okay. So a lot of you have one of these machines that will do this, and some of you don't. But you can see what you can do with this. So when I do these quilts, I do um, a combination of things. I use, um, you have to use the embroidery designs to help you get this part of the pattern. You can see the pattern. This is the embroidery pattern. And then I just wanted to stipple along the outside edge of it. And I didn't want to stipple over the applique. So I used, I'm going to show you how I did that. I, I used my embroidery patterns that I originally made this design with to help me. And then I'm also going to do some decorative stitching. And like this middle section, I just quilted the whole thing in one piece. So when I did the quilt, I did just block by block. So I, I um, many of you have made quilts before and I, I sandwiched it and um, put the batting in the backing on. You want to make sure your backing extends over the edges, maybe four inches or five inches or so, to give you something to hoop on, because you have to hoop this, you know, on a hoop. You need to have something to get a hold of it. So make, you know, so when you sandwich it, I pin based. I'm not a big sprayer, so I like to pin based. Um, so when I pin basted my quilt, you know, I did the whole quilt, and that quilt was about, See, Jingle All the Way must have been about 60 by 70 or ish. You know, it wasn't a real big quilt, but it was still a nice lap size quilt. And I started in the center, and then I kind of worked my way out. 
um, just like you would if you were quilting it by any kind of machine quilting. You normally kind of work in the center and work your way towards the outside edges. So that's what I'm going to do kind of here. I'm actually going to just do, this is such a small piece. I'm going to start at the bottom and then work my way up. Um, this is small enough that I can do that. And I actually do kind of have this one um, glue sticked down to the <laughs> batting because that seems to work really well for me. Um, this is done in a nine and a half by 14 hoop. So the one I'm doing is nine in a nine and a half by 14. Okay, so this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do the little watermelon. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff on the machine. So I'm going to turn this around, let you see the machine. Hopefully I can second here. I need to get my mouse a little closer to me. Um, when I do, oops, second here, I've got a lot of dust. When I do working with Design Center, um, I'm left-handed, so I have a very hard time working on the screen with my fingers or with a pen because the screen is tipped totally the wrong direction for me because I'm left-handed. So I use a mouse, and I have this little wired mouse that I plug into my machine, and it works really well. I can run it just like I normally run any mouse, and um, that seems to work the best for me when I'm working in Design Center because then I can, um, my fingers don't work really well, and if you're trying to do something very intricate, the screen is hard with your finger, and then um, the little stylus that came with the luminaires and like the Solaris's is kind of big, and it doesn't work very well with the, um, with the, with, you know, it doesn't work very well if you're doing something very precise. So I found that I'm work, working better with a mouse. I've been using the mouse quite a while. And um, I sometimes just set it over here in the middle. I've got a lot of equipment here, so I'm going to set it over here in the middle of the machine and do some work. And you can see my mouse running around there. So, okay. So the first thing we're going to do, let me show you what we're going to do first. We are going to quilt this block that has the, the applique on it. And you see the ruching is not on here yet. So we'll put that on after it is quilted. And there's no rhyme or reason for how you to do how to do this, but I kind of came up with a plan when I started doing these that I like to use a like a stipple pattern around the appliques and on the like pieced blocks. And then I've been using decorative stitches that are also in the machine um, on like the planar blocks to give them more interest. So we're going to do both of those. We're going to use the stipple pattern around my um, watermelon, and then we're going to do the um, decorative stitch up here on the blocks, okay, for the center. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the screen here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to create the block. And hopefully you can see this okay. So I'm gonna, I want you to be able to see most of the screen. Okay, so we need to create our block. Now what I do with these blocks, I wish I had a better place to put my mouse. I just don't have a good one. Okay, might have to put do some of this with my finger on the screen. So um, when I do the block, okay, the first thing I do is I have a, I have a um, tape measure here. And I'm going to measure my block. Now, this particular block, this is the edge. So it's got the quarter inch seam all, all the way around. Now, if you were doing the quilt, you know, you'd have another block like right next to it. Okay. So all I'm going to do is measure my, my block. So just pretend that there's another block over here. I'm going to leave a quarter inch seam on the edge here. But let's measure this. And this block is eight and a half right now, all the way to the edges. So in other words, it's an eight inch wide block because there's a seam allowance on this one that hasn't been taken off because it's a table runner. And then I'm gonna measure, that's the width, and then the, the, the measurement up and down is six and a half. Or I'm sorry, six and a quarter because I have a seam allowance down here. So in other words, it's six by eight, okay? so. If I had had a, a block in the middle of my quilt, I would say that's a six inch by eight inch block. Hopefully everybody's blocks turn out to be about the size they're supposed to. That's the size this one was supposed to be. Okay, so I know I want it to be six inches by eight inches. That's gonna be my entire block. So we need to make a block. We're gonna go to the home page, 
and we're going to go down to my design center. If you have a baby lock, it's going to be called IQ Designer. Okay. So we're going to hit my design center. And the first thing I want to do is make my, my block, the, you know, the area of my block. So that is going to be with a shape. This little tool here is the shape tool. It's the, the circle and the square, so we're going to get our shape. I want just an outline, which is the first tab. The second one is a fill, and the third one is a fill and an outline. I just want an outline for this. I'm going to click the square, and then I'm going to click OK. Now I need to size this, because this is not the size of the square we need. Remember, we need it to be 6 by 8. So I am going to, and on this particular block, since I have a seam allowance all the way around, I am going to make it a full 6 inches by 8 inches. If this was on the quilt, you know, in the middle of the quilt with other blocks on either side, I want to be careful that I don't, um, you know, go over onto the next block with this one. So I've been making it just a little bit smaller both ways just to keep it in the seam allowance so when we get there i'll show you where i do so here's my square but we need to size this i want it to be six inches tall and eight inches wide so what i'm going to do is these two buttons in here um, make the the design go out in aspect ratio or in so in other words, it would be square, and I don't want that. I want it to be squashed, you know, squished out and, and down a little bit. So we're going to go and use these, and I'm going to make this, um, I want to be 8 inches, whoops, I overshot it, didn't I? I want it 8 inches wide. Let's see here. So we're going to do 8 inches wide. Now, if, I, if this was a block in a regular quilt, you know, in a quilt, I would make it, about 7.95. I would just bring it in just a little bit so it wasn't a full eight inches, okay? And then I want the height to be six, but in this case I'm going to leave it a full because I want to make sure the stitches go just underneath my seam allowance. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit to six inches. Let's see if we can get it down there. Okay, so there's my six inches. So it's, it's a rectangle and it's longer than it is tall, all right? Now, that is the border of our block that I just made. I'm gonna click OK. And at this point, I need, ooh, you know what, I forgot something. We need to go back. I'm gonna, we're gonna do this again. I just happened to think we didn't do something. So I'm gonna go back and hit the, just ignore everything I just did and we'll start over. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done this for a couple weeks, so I'm sorry. So, Remember this one has a has an applique in it, and I told you we were going to use the design. So it's easier if you do this first. This design I have just saved on my sewing machine, and it might be on your stick. So what I'm going to do first, and then we'll go back and make the square again. I'm going to bring this up in the embroidery. I'm going to go and and it right mine saved on the machine. It's right here. It's this watermelon. And I want it to be the other way, so I'm going to set it, hit edit, and then I'm going to rotate it so that it's the other direction like that, just to make it easier for me. And I'm going to hit OK. The, this software or the machine has this really cool feature that you can make stamps. So in other words, I can make a stamp that goes around this watermelon applique and then I will have an exact um, area where it is, so I know exactly where it is, so I won't stitch over it, okay? So I'm gonna go into edit, I'm already there, sorry, and then down here, see the little flower? Um, some of the machines have it, it's a color, and it's kind of a bluish color, or greenish color, I'm sorry, and it's a stamp, so I'm just gonna touch that, and when it comes up, you can probably see this dark line around it, okay? And see around the little, the, like the little part up here too. And I want the distance to be zero. In other words, I want it to come right down to the, the outside line, okay? So I've got it set the distance at zero. And then down here, see it has a memory button? 
um, the luminaire or the, uh, the dream machines have kind of like a flower here and that is the memory button so I'm just going to hit memory and it says recall from design center stamp pattern list so that's how I made all of my stamps I would bring up as I was doing the block I would bring up the design first and then I would create my stamp and then I went into design center to finish it okay so I apologize I got I got ahead I got the card card ahead of the horse didn't I so let's go back home we don't need the design anymore we already got our stamp made we're going to go back to design center and we'll start again so i'm going to go back to that stamp feature i'm going to click the square again and i just want the outline and click ok and then i'm going to go back to the sizing button and i want to make it eight inches wide Oops, she overshot it again. I do this all the time when I do this. We'll get it down there. And again, if I was doing this on a block that there was another block right next to it, I might make it about 7.95, just a little smaller so I don't take the chance of going over the edges. But please uh, measure your blocks, each one, because then you know it, it may be just a little smaller, so you'll have to make the, the design just a little smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to make this one six. So we're going to squish it down to six inches. Okay, so we got our six by eight inch representation of our square. Now I'm going to click OK. And now I want to bring in that stamp we made. You know, we made that stamp and we saved it, and it said to retrieve it in the stamps. Well, that same button that we hit is the shapes or the stamp key. So I'm going to click that button again, and then if you look up at the top, look at all these different options, and look at here. There's that flower. That's where the stamps go. So I'm going to click on my flower, and here is my watermelon that I put in here. Now there's a bunch of other ones in here, and what happens is these save like, I don't know, like 20 of these, and then as you do more, they eventually disappear. So they just stay in here until you just you keep doing more. You can see some of my jingle all the way ones that I've been working with. Okay, so here's the watermelon. So we're gonna whoops, touch the watermelon hopefully and click OK. So that's our stamp. So there is the shape of the watermelon with the little, the little um, juice up here. Okay, now I've got it pretty much centered. When I cut this block, if you can see it, I tried to stay as centered as I could when I trimmed it. We can slightly move this just a little bit side to side if we need to, but normally I just leave them centered. These all come in centered when you do this, okay? So there is our watermelon stamp. This is going to be where we don't want to sew. We don't want to sew in here, and we don't want to sew over the little, the little juice over there. So what I want to do is I want to put a stipple in here. So I'm going to put a stipple around this block. And to find the stipples, the top set of buttons up here are for the lines in your design, and the bottom set of buttons are for the fills. And all we need is a fill. So I'm going to touch this little line here. Um, if you have a, let me go back, if you have a, um, a dream machine, it's just going to be like a piece of paper right here. It's going to have like a piece of paper and that's where the properties are mine has this line here so I'm going to touch that one and then I have some choices this is a standard fill this is a stipple fill and then these are all the decorative fills and we'll use the decorative fills in a few minutes but tonight this time we're going to use the um, we're going to use the stipple so I'm going to touch the stipple but maybe and I'm going to pick a color. I found that if I pick a color, I looked, I'm going to look at my fabric. So my fabric is white. So make sure you pick a color that you can see on your fabric, especially if you have a Luminaire or a Solaris and you're using your projection camera. And I am going to use the projection camera tonight. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but I'll do it with the scanner and the projection camera. Okay. So I'm going to use red. Red I should be able to see, okay, on my white. And I'm going to click OK. All right. 
So I have now my stipples here. Well, I need to get them in here. So to do that, I need to find the little paint pot. So touch the little paint pot. And this is like the fill button. And I'm going to go out here. And I want it to only fill on the outside between the square and the watermelon. So I'm just going to touch out here. And look, I have stipples around the watermelon. It's called hole sewing. So it does it automatically. Isn't that cool? And when I found out I could do this, it was like, this is so awesome. Because <laughs> I don't have to sew over the top of my applique. All right, so we're, we've got this set up, but we need to make some um, setting arrangements for the sewing now. Oh, second, we got another comment. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Does the Destiny 2 make stamps? Yes, it does, Marianne. Um, it is in the same place. It's in the edit screen, but yours is going to be a flower, and I believe it's the green flower. It's There's two flowers. One of them makes stamps, and the other one does stippling. So I think it's the green one on that one. Okay. So we've got our we've got our design started here. Now we needed to make some settings. We're gonna we're gonna tell it how long a stitches we want, how close together we want them, and that type of thing. So I'm gonna click the net word next down here. And when I get to this screen, it gives me some settings. Second here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. In this case now, I'm in inches, and I learned to digitize in millimeters, so we're going to switch to millimeters temporarily here. So if I go up here to the settings page right here, the little piece of paper with the corner turned down, and on my machine it's on page 9, see where it says unit? I can go to millimeters and then click OK. So now I know how long my stitches are and how, how um, dense it's going to be. So my stitches are extremely short. 2.0 is pretty short. So I'm going to change that to 2.5. That's a nice stitch length. I'm going to click OK. And then um, the, the luminaires and the dream machines will say set there. Instead of OK, mine says OK. Yours will probably say set. Same button. And then this is the amount of, of um, you know, how close together the stippling is. This is pretty close, so I'm going to click on that, and I found that 7 is a nice size for these smaller blocks. And you might just have to do a little bit of um, test sewing to see what works for you, but 7 seems to work for me. So we're going to put that at 7 millimeters and click OK. And then this one is the distance from the edge, and I'm just going to leave that alone. That's fine, the, the default setting, okay? So now you can see it's changed on my screen. See how it's changed? The stippling is a little further apart, and it's going to have a shorter stitch length. You can't really see that on the screen, but it is going to have a short or a longer, sorry, stitch length. So I'm going to hit set and OK. And once I do that, now does this look familiar? We're on the sewing side of the machine, and see where it says embroidery? So there's, an, there's the embroidery button. So I'm just going to touch embroidery. And at this point, I need to know where to put this design, right? So we have these wonderful things on our machines. We have, like I have two things. I have a scanner and a projection camera. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here, and we're going to scan this. This button right here is the scanner button. This one's it's a little camera. That's how you run the scanner. All you have to do is touch it, and it scans. Okay? It's, it's not hard to use. Just touch it and, it, and it scans. So I'm going to touch this button. Mine comes up and says, do you want to scan? And I'm going to hit scan. I'll give you a second here, and I will rotate this so you can see it scan. Okay? And it's asking me. It's, it's going to scan with the built-in camera, which, I, yeah, that's cool. And I'll hit OK. I am hooped. I've got this hooped in a dime snap hoop. This is the nine and a half by 14 snap hoop. These work really well for doing this. And I'll show you when I go to move this how I do it because I don't ever take the, the quilt. Once I get the quilt through the machine the first time, I don't take it out. I just lift the hoop up and, and slide the quilt and then sn snap it down. If it's not straight, it doesn't matter because you're going to be scanning. So it doesn't matter if it's straight or not. 
Okay. So now over here on the screen, it just did the scanning. Now look, see here is so here is my design. Here is my quilt that's in the in the hoop. I'm going to take my design now and I'm going to pull it down here so that it looks so it goes around my watermelon. That looks pretty good. Okay, see, and I might be just a little bit crooked. So if you're a little crooked, like I think I'm just a teeny bit crooked. I can't get it to move here. Just a second. Okay, can you see that it might be a little crooked on the screen because I've got a little white patch up here. So then I'm going to close this, and then under layout, I could hit my rotate button, maybe just a little teeny bit. I've got a point one degrees, and just maybe just rotate it a little bit because then I straightened it out just a little. Because see, I may not have I may not have gotten my design. Um, quite um, straight in the hoop. Let's see, I might need to go down again. So let's try that just a little bit because it's just a little bit crooked. So I just love the scanner. See, we can do this with the scanner with just, it's so easy. Okay. So now I'm pretty sure it's, it's fairly close, but on this machine, I have yet another tool that I can really use, and it's the projection camera. Now, I'm I will apologize, it will not show up on the camera very well, because it's a camera taking a picture of a camera. So it doesn't always show up real well, but I can see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit okay now, and now I'm gonna hit this little button that looks like the little cone. I'm gonna turn that on, and it takes a second for it to turn on. Okay, so it's on, and I can see my design. And if you can see this little red box here, that's the camera area. So no, it does not show my entire design because it would have to be like up on the ceiling. You know what the projectors, projectors do. You know, they're way, way back, and then you can get it on a big screen. But we don't have that option because we're in, it's in a machine. So if I look here, what I like to do with my cameras, I like to move my camera. See, I can move it. I can move it over. And if I put this down here, you, you might be able to see it just a little bit. I can see that my stippling is running right along here. Yeah, can you kind of see it? If I kind of cover up the light, can you kind of see it? I think you could kind of see it there when I had my hand there. Can you see the red, the stippling? Okay. And I can see that it is on in, in a pretty good place. However, I notice that I'm a little off center. So I'm going to go move this again let's move this over and let's look at the other corner because I like to move it in the corner so I can see so see I'm a little off center with it I don't know if you can see the stipples a little bit you can kind of see them a little bit over here but I noticed that I'm just a little off center with this design and it's probably because when I cut this I got it a little off so let's go look at the uh, the bottom corner. So let's move this down again. I like to do this and look at the corners. So I can kind of see. And that looks pretty good. But I am a little bit too far on this one side. I don't know that I'm going to be able to fix that very much. But what I'm going to try. So I just turned the camera off for a minute. I'm going to try going returning. And I'm going to edit, and I'm going to hit the size button, and I'm going to, to hit this like one bump out, or maybe two, and see if I can fill that space over here a little bit, because my design was a little off, I noticed. So let's try that and see if that fills in that space a little bit better. Let's go back to embroidery again, and now I can turn on that camera. So now I can look at it again. I just made it just a little teeny bit bigger. So I'm hoping you can see a little of this. I'm going to move it over to the side again. Now I'm pretty close on this side, but it really doesn't matter because I'm going to have binding on it. But I am a little closer over here so that I my binding will cover that. So I think it might be okay. So let's go down to the corner again. That looks pretty good. Whoops, I didn't get it all the way down. All right, and then I'm going to 
slide it over here. I wish you could see this better because I can really see it really well. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. In fact, I think I would rather go back one more time. I'm going to size it. I'm just going to take one. Remember I sized it. I'm going to go back one, back smaller one bump because I think I'll be happier with that. And I think it looks pretty good otherwise. So we'll put the camera back on and I'll look at it again. This one was hard. I remember I had trouble when I did the first one. I couldn't get it exactly centered because it was, um, it was just, I suppose when I cut it, I must have cut it a little off, off. So it's a little bit moved to the one side. And I know I did all of them the same way. So I think it will be fine. I might just hit this and I think we'll be okay. That looks pretty good. But I really love the camera for doing my final, final testing because I, I wish you could see this better because it just doesn't show up. It's the camera on with the camera. You just can't see it, but I can see the red lines really easily. And it shows exactly where it's going to stitch and it makes it so easy to do your final, your final um, movement of your pattern. And I did have to move it just a little bit. The camera that scans on the other machines is very good, but you may find that will be slightly off because with this camera, I can even get it more precise. So there's two cameras on this machine to do this, okay? So I'm gonna click okay. I think I'm happy with this now. So at this point, we're ready to we're ready to sew it. Now, if you notice on this design, see, I've got two pieces though. The first, this piece, the, the, the square around the outside edge, right now it's a satin stitch and obviously I am not gonna sew that because I needed it as a placement to make my block. That's why I put it in there and I am not gonna sew that. I'm only gonna sew the red stippling up here, okay? So that's all we're gonna sew. All right, what I have done then when I do, um, when I do this type of quilting, I really like the, um, so I'm turning this up here so you can see it. This is the um, Madeira Aura Quilt um, long arm thread. I use this in my long arm and it works really great in the machine. You don't have, you can use embroidery thread, you can use whatever you want, um, but I've been using this. Um, I'm gonna so do this in white tonight and I've got it in my needle and in the bobbin, okay? So at this point, I'm ready to sew. I'm gonna put my foot down and we're gonna watch this sew, see how we did. And I am going to hold this down a little bit. I'm going to watch these edges pretty close because I don't want it to pull it up off the back. I did put a little bit of glue stick on here, and that helps a lot. And when it gets done stitching, I'll try to get the camera a little closer so you can see the stitches because it really does turn out really cute. And I did my entire jingle all the way quilt like this. I just did one block at a time. You know, I kind of had a little plan ahead of time. Like I wanted to do stippling on the applique blocks and I want and on the piece blocks. And then the plain blocks that were like filler blocks, I did decorative stitches. And I just kind of whatever hit me at the time, that's what I put on the quilt. And if I would have had that, taken that to a custom quilter, it would have cost me a lot of money to have it done like that. So my, I thought my quilt turned out really good. It was fun. I had a few mistakes in it, but I am learning and I feel much more confident doing this now. So I am kind of watching these, these sides to make sure nothing pops up on me. Um, I have really cute, I don't know if you can see the backing, it has little watermelon seeds on it. Now the Kimberbell quilts, um, the first one I did, they didn't call for any like backing on the material. And I was having a lot of trouble with puckering. So um, the second one um, I did, I used um, Shape Flex on the back of the fabric. And so I did that with Hello Sunshine and that works out really well and it keeps the fabric nice and flat and you don't get the puckering. Getting just about done. Okay, 
So if I get this a little closer, if I tip this down, I think you'll be able to see the stitches. Oops, I decided it wasn't going to cut, evidently. So let me grab my scissors. Okay. Let me see if I can get this a little closer, if you can see the stitching. Now, I think you can see it there. See, here's my nice stipples all the way around my watermelon. And it didn't go on the watermelon at all. And it went right up to the edge of the um, center portion right here. Okay. So there's the first block. So that is the way you would do this with an applique. If you have an applique, use the actual pattern that you may use to make the applique first and make a stamp. Yes, Marianne, we do carry the magnetic hoops. We have all the different sizes. Um, we're having a dime event this weekend, so we will probably have more in stock. Because, <laughs> well, we ordered a bunch and we may have to order more. But these work so well, because when I show you what I'm going to do next, pretend this is a big quilt, okay? So now I want to do, um, let's see, let's do the other, let's do the center next, okay? And then the other end I'll be doing with the same pattern. I'll just save this pattern in my design or in my, my machine. And then we will do the use the same pattern on the other end. So to do that, to save it, see, there's a memory button right here. I'll hit memory, and I'm going to save it in the machine. And we'll use that one then to do the other end when we get to over there. But we're going to do the center next, okay? So this is my little trick that I learned. So pretend this is a big quilt. What I do is when I was ready for the next block, I would grab a hold of this, this magnetic hoop, okay? And I would pull this up and lay it on top of the machine like this. And then I would just pull the quilt down. And you can kind of, you know, if it's not straight, it doesn't matter because you can, you've got a camera. So I want to be able to do this entire center section of this, this um, table runner. So I'm kind of watching it that I can make sure I get the whole thing in here. And I think I need to go back. So I'm going to go back this way a little bit so that it will, I can do that whole center section. I think I still might have to go back. But did you see how I did that? I just slid it. So I never took that, once I got that quilt into my machine, I never took the quilt out of the machine. I just laid it in the machine, and I just moved the hoop around. You know, I left the, the hoop right in the machine and just moved the top, basically. Okay, so see, I'm, I'm kind of crooked now, but I can fix this, see? I'm just going to pull it this direction a little bit. There we go. Pull this down a little bit and straighten it back up again. And again, I have I have a camera, so if it's not perfectly straight, it doesn't really matter because I can move my pattern around when I when I scan it. Okay. Now, the one thing you do want to be very careful about with this, and I'm going to pull this a little bit this direction because I notice I'm a little closer to the inside. Um, the one thing you want to be very careful of is pins. So when you scan, these pins need to be gone. I do pin-based, and um, so, so I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to take all these pins out because you do not want any pins in the entire hoop because if they are, you will um, catch them on the foot and rip it out. So just be careful of pin-basting and make sure you remove all of your pins. Isn't that those, those little tumblers cute? I like making tumblers. So this one had tumblers in the center. So let me put these pins down. Okay. Still think I might need to come out this way a little bit. I noticed that I'm a little closer on the inside. So this is very, this is kind of close to the edges of the hoop. So I have to make sure there's, it's out far enough. Okay. Okay. So now we need to know how big this area is. I want this whole area to be done with a decorative stitch. So I'm just going to measure this. Got to find my tape measure again. And this is eight and a half. So in other words, it's eight inches wide. Because remember, we need our seam allowance here. And then it is 12 inches long. So basically, our square is going to be eight by 12. Now, the 12 inch way. We might make it just a little bit under 12, just to make sure that we don't go off over into the white on the ends, okay? So let's make the design for our center. 
we're going to go back to Design Center to do this. Now, this one doesn't have an applique, so we don't need to make the applique stamp first like we did before. So I'm going to just hit the home button, and I'm going to go make sure I got the little flipper down on there, and I'm going to go back to Design Center. And I need to make a rectangle that is 8 by 12, okay? I do want it to be a full 8 inches wide, but I may make it just a little bit under 12 so that I don't run off that and that I don't run off onto the white. Okay, um, Jackie's asking, did anybody else's video stop? Is everybody still hearing me? Okay, it appears everything's fine. So can you put thumbs up if you're still hearing me? Okay. Okay. Let's see if we get some thumbs ups. Put put your thumbs up. Go down and put likes or thumbs up so that I know you can hear me. Okay, awesome. Okay. So Jackie, it must have been you. I'm getting lots of thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you. It's hard for me to see on this end, so I'm glad people ask me questions because <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So we're going to make our rectangle for the center section, but we're going to use a decorative stitch this time. So we're going to go back to those shape keys right here. And I'm going to choose a nut. Now this time, this is going to be a fill. This is going to be the whole thing. And I'm not using an applique in it. So I'm going to actually choose the second tab this time. This is a fill. So I'm going to choose that button. And then I'm going to choose the square. Okay, whoops, we've got some comments. Just a second here. Okay, good. Everybody's, everybody's okay, cool. So then here's our square, and then I'm going to hit OK. i got to move this back just a little bit so you can see the screen. Hit OK. So here is the fill. So this time it's got a fill in it. We're going to size it again. So remember, we needed it to be 8 inches wide. Whoop, so look, here I'm now I'm in millimeters. Well, I can't figure out how big it is. So I'm going to go back up to the settings, go back to page 9, and I'm going to go back to inches for a little bit, and then hit OK. All right, so I want it to be eight inches wide. So we're using the, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it out to eight inches. Whoops, overshot it again. Come on. Sometimes it goes so fast and I can't control it. And then other times it goes very slowly. There we go. So there's our eight inches wide. Because remember, this was eight and a half, but it's okay because we we're going to put a binding on the edges. And then I want to make it about 12 inches tall, but I'm going to be a little short of 12. So we're going to go out to the 12 because that center section is 12. Whoops, I really overshot it, didn't I? And I'm going to go just a little under 12 because that way I won't go out into the white. Let's make it about 11.95 or so. Because it was a full, this one was a full 12. My other one was a little bit short. So let's just make maybe 11.9 just to give us a little bit of space. So that we won't go out into the white. Okay. So it's just, just a hair under 12. All right. Then we're going to click OK. Now this one I want to be a decorative stitch. And I used a real pretty decorative stitch on this one. I kind of like this one. So let's use this one again tonight. This one was this kind of round one. And this one I made quite a lot larger than the traditional size or the, the default size. I've got some more comments. Just a second here. Trying to get it to scan. Oh, okay. Everybody's doing okay. So I'm going to go now. Remember, these set of buttons are for the fills. And I want to get a fill. So I'm going to click this button. And these were the stipple fills. These are your, your um, decorative fills. So I'm going to click the decorative fills and select. Now, on the Luminaire and the Solaris, there are 30 um, new, there's 30 fills now. On the Dream Machines, if you have both um, updates, they were upgrades, there were um, 15. And I have 30, and then I just got the new upgrade, and I got six more fills. So I've got all these beautiful fills now to use. But the one I chose for this was number, let's see if I can find it. Where is it? Oh, here, number 25. So the people with the Dream Machines won't have this, but there's still other one, nice ones to use. So I'm going to use number 25. 
and click OK. And then on this one, um, I think the red should show fairly well. I've got, you know, a lot of different colors. Remember, we picked a color. And I've got some red here, but there's enough other colors. I think I can see the red. So I think I'll just stay with red. I think I can see the design when I put it on with the projector. So I'm just going to click OK. You have to kind of think about this when you're using the projector that you can see it because there has to be a color that'll show up on your fabric. Okay. So now I'm ready to put my design in. So I have to get the little paint pot or the fill button. And then I'm going to touch this whole square. And there is my decorative fill that I just chose. Okay. So it's going to be the whole panel is going to be that. All right. So now we're going to click next. And we need to do some settings again. Um, the first setting is the percentage of the size. So right now it's at the default or 100%. But when I did this, I found that I wanted it a little bit bigger. So I actually made it 150%. You can go up to 200%. And I think this one was 150. So I'm going to click 150. So it made it bigger. So there's not as many um, re uh, repeats of the pattern. The next thing is the um, angle. So I left it at 0%, which was the default angle. The next button down allows me to turn off the outline. And I don't want the outline on. And it is now defaulting it off, which I really like. So I'm going to leave that off because I don't want an outline sewn all the way around the edge of this. Sometimes you would want that, but I don't want that on this one. Now on the luminaire, there are two buttons that are not on the dream machines. The first one is they're both skewing type buttons that I can skew this and make more patterns out of this one. And I can make it like curvy and different shapes. So these two buttons here allow me to do that and also to offset this way or this way. Um, I'm not going to do that with this pattern. I'm going to leave those at the default. And then the final button is a new button, and I really like this because these designs have been very, very thick. And you, the, the machine would sew over them a lot. And this allows me a thickness setting. So I can actually turn down the thickness and make it thinner. And I've been using that because then it doesn't sew over it so many times. Because I was having a little bit of an alignment problem because it was sewing over it so many times. So sometimes things would be slightly off alignment. So I'm going to go down and make this a thinner. And the, the Dream Machines and the, and the Destinies do not have this. This is a new button on the, on the uh, Luminaire. OK, so we're going to hit OK. And here's my pattern. It does not have a line around the outside. It kind of looks like it does. It's just the box around it. And then I'm going to hit Set. And OK, because now we're going to the embroidery side of the machine. So now I'm ready to scan again, because I want to know where I'm going to be putting this design. So hopefully I got this up high enough. If I didn't, we'll move the hoop again. So let me go ahead and hit embroidery. And I'm going to hit the camera. And I'm going to scan. So let's see if I got the entire thing in here. I may have to move my pattern again because I notice that I'm kind of down a ways this way, so I may have to pull it back. Because that is a pretty good size pattern. So let's see. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to bring it down, because I can barely, I think I'll have to move it, because I'm, I'm just barely able to see the bottom. So if you give me just a second here, let's move this up just a little bit. I'm just going to pull this up, and then we'll rescan it. I have to do this occasionally because you get kind of, you think you got it in the hoop just right and then you got to, you're not quite high enough or low enough. So there we go. I think that'll be all right. Got it up there several inches. So let's do another scan. We'll just scan it again. That way should we should be okay. Okay, and okay. And we'll do one more scan, see how we did. Should be better now. Oh, yes, now much better. I can see that I've got white. See, I've got white on both ends now and down here. So it would have just barely fit. So I'm going to bring my design and kind of place it where I think I need it. 
and get it fairly close. And then I'm going to click close here. And now I want to bring open my camera, my projection camera. So I'm going to hit the little cone. And I'm going to go over here and hopefully you can see a little bit. I'm going to look at my design. So I'm going to bring this up to the corner. I like to check the corners. So I can see it's a little hard on the black, but the top looks pretty good. Let's bring it over. I actually could make it just a little bit bigger. I could have I could have left it at the full 12 because I must have a good full 12 here. So I might actually make it just a little bit bigger. Otherwise, it looks like we're pretty good when it comes to the size and the corners. I wish you could see this better, but I know you can't. It's just because it's it's the camera with the camera. I know when we when we do events with this machine, it's very hard for people to see the projection on the cameras because it just doesn't show up. And I am going to move this up just a little bit because I think it's a little lower. And if I move it up, I may not have to make it longer. So I think that looks pretty good. That looks better. So I'm going to go back up to the top corner again. I think I'm pretty happy with it. That looks better. And let me see. I'm going to go down a little bit. I can't see very well on the black to see if it's a, if I've got it measuring side to side okay. Let me go over here and look. I think I did pretty well. But I'm going to have my, I could have actually moved this way a little bit. It's, it's really hard with just the scanner to know that you've got it exactly where you want it. And that's why the camera is so nice because I can make my final adjustments. And actually, believe it or not, I've got it pretty straight. So <laughs> it's actually pretty straight along the edges. Okay. All right. I think I've got it where I want it. I wish I just wish you could see this camera better because it is so cool, but it is so hard to see it. You can kind of see a very faint red there. And there's no, I've never found any better way to show this on this camera. I'm, I'm going to figure out a way. I was hoping maybe one of the educators would have a better way to show it, but it's because it's a projector with a camera looking at it, and that's why it doesn't show up very much. Okay. So, but if you look at my screen where I have used the, where I've used the um, scan, you can see that you, you really can get it where you want it. And it's very close. I did move it just slightly to one side because I could see with the other camera that it was a little off center. Okay, so I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to sew this out. So let's go ahead and put the button down and we'll sew out this decorative pattern. And this is going to cover that entire center section of the table runner. And I noticed, whoops, I got a little tail that's going to hang there. This one sews out rather strangely. Uh, I remember when I did this the first time, it's like, wow, this sews out oddly. Get a little closer so you can see it. You'll be able to see the white pretty well on most of it. And this is that light. I chose the light feature, so it isn't going to sew over it. Um, it's not going to sew over it as many times. It still will sew over it a few times. If you've ever watched a long arm sew, it actually sews over, you know, the design um, quite a few times because it, it's it's doing a, a straight line and it just keeps going. So it does sew over it a few times as it's going. I've got this running in about um, seven or eight hundred stitches a minute. I don't like to sew much faster than that because it's just so hard to um, everything kind of bounces around and stuff, especially when you're using bigger hoops. I like to slow it down a little bit. But it's looking really good. So are there any questions while this is sewing? Is this making sense to you how I'm doing this? I basically am creating the design in Design Center for each block as I go. 
So you just have to kind of make your designs. You get real fast at it once you get going on um, making these blocks because, you know, you just pick your size of your block, make your square, and if you've made a stamp of your applique, then you put that in the center and then put the stitches on the outside of that. Are there any questions? Or have I put everybody to sleep? There's a lot of people here. Thanks for coming and sewing with me tonight, guys. There's 32 people here, according to my to my uh, screen here. That's cool. So yeah, so it kind of started, you notice that it kind of started in the center and it's working its way out. Like I got a tail hanging up here. I think it'll be okay. But I really enjoyed doing my quilting this way. It, it's it's really been easy. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah, this is really a fun way to quilt. And if you have one of these machines, it I didn't realize how quickly I could quilt these things and have them be very custom looking like I've taken them to somebody that does, um, you know, that does custom hand guided um, quilting. Because hand guided quilting custom like that is very expensive. Because these people that do this are very good at it. Oh, how did I do the Donald Duck, duck, duck stamp? Um, I, just, I just brought up Donald. Um, the design in the machine and made a stamp around it because then you like if you wanted to make a wall hanging or something You could just put the stippling around in them What size temple block is it um, you know Jackie let me measure it here. They're not very big maybe three inch blocks Yeah, they finished three inches. They're not very big now this one this this little table runner was from hello sunshine so these are the Kimberbell quilt books, and they have in the back, they have um, like extra class or extra little projects. And this one um, was from the Hello Sunshine book. Oh, Teresa asked if is there a way to make the machine not tie a knot? That way there won't be a blob in the back of the table runner. Okay, so this, as you notice, this machine really is going continuously. It's not stopping and starting. And I figure that the, the answer to that question really is no, Teresa, because that, that is part of the design. Um, and what I do with these, you know, these quilts that I'm doing this way, I'm not planning on putting these in a, in a competition. And these are my quilts. And I don't care if I have a knot on the back. This machine does not tie really bad, big, long knots in the back. Some of the older ones did. This one does not. This one's not bad. And so I just go through and trim them. And I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be putting these in competitions. And they turn out really well. And when I turn this over, if I turn this over and show you, Here's the back of this after it was quilted. There's not a lot of not a knots because this is pretty continuous. So you can see there's not really any knots in the back of this at all. And my other quilt does not really have a lot of knots in the back of it. Because these designs are actually pretty much continuous and they don't, you know, they don't make a big blob. So it's getting along the edge here. But that's a very good question, Teresa. The machines have a knotting feature and they bury that tail in the back. And even if you try to pull your bobbin thread up, it will still try to make a knot in the back and then makes a worse knot. So it's better not to pull the bobbin thread up. I tried that. Yes, you can trim close. What I do is I don't trim so close that I tie, go through the knot. And then when you wash these, those little ends just kind of shrivel up and you don't really see them. So um, I don't worry about it. I do the same thing with the edge to edge quilting and the embroidery machine designs. I do not pull up the bobbin thread. She tells you to. And I have learned that it makes more of a mess if I do it that way. So I just let it bury the tail. I choose normally for my quilts, I choose something that's fairly matchy to the back. 
and then you don't notice the knots. So don't get too wild with your, your color choices. And um, now this one will show quite a bit. This one did. You know, it was white on the red. But, you know, it didn't. It doesn't look knotty on the back at all. If you're careful what you're doing. I don't really, there's a few little knots. I trimmed a little bit. And I think this one had red. This is Jingle All the Way. It had red, too. But you can see there's not a lot of knots on the back of this either. So I was, I was very pleased. These are pretty much continuous line um, designs, so you don't get that knotting problem. Okay, we're getting about done here. It's working up the side. But I really enjoyed doing this. So this, this um, even though it's just a little table runner, this would be the way you could do your quilts. And my, um, I'm, I'm hoping to do my um, hap, or Hello Sunshine quilt before too much longer. I've got all the stuff, it's all put together and it is ready to quilt. I just don't, I just need to sandwich it to do it, so. All right, so we're going around the, the very loops. Let's get this little tail out of here. So we're just about done. And I think it's done. There might be one little thing it has to do on the corner down here. Seems like it did a couple little corners. There's like the little round thing in the corner it did when I did this before. So there's one there. So that there would be a little knot there, but it's really going to be almost underneath the um, underneath the binding. And then there's a little one down here. It did this little curve here, and maybe the one here too. But you saw that it basically sewed and kept sewing and didn't it didn't start and stop much. Yep, so it's gonna do this little corner over here too. So that's the only place that I really had much of a knot. Okay. And that is the center. That's how I did the center. So that whole center is done. Okay, so then again, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to just lift this up and lay this on, up on the machine. And then I want this, I mean, it's easier to do the watermelon this direction, so I'm just gonna flip this over and we'll do the other watermelon. So kind of get it in here straight, bring this down. These hoops are so awesome. I really hadn't used these much until I started doing this. And oh my gosh, it makes it so much easier because I never have to take anything out of the machine. I can just keep sliding it around. Okay, so there is my other side for the watermelon. Let's get these, get these uh, pins out of here. And we'll go back and grab our design that we made before because this is the same applique. And whoops, I got a little thread sticking out here, so we'll trim that. There we go. And on this one, whoops, I just dropped my glue stick. Just give me a second here. I'm gonna raise this up and I'm gonna give it a little glue stick just to hold it down a little bit so I, those corners won't come out. Okay. Now let's go back and let's just grab that design we've already made. I have this one saved already, so I'm not going to save it again. I'm just going to go back to the home page. Let's go back to embroidery. And I saved it in my pocket in my machine. So here is our watermelon that we used earlier. I'm going to click set. And then I'm going to click embroidery. And I'm going to go up here to my scanner and I'm going to scan this. Sure, I got all the pins out. Looks like it did. And hit scan. And okay, so we'll scan it. Okay. We'll go back over here. So see, there's our design, and we can say we're pretty close. So I'm going to bring it down. And let's see here.
think I got pretty straight with this one. Looks like I might need to do, we'll hit layout and I might need to rotate it just a little. Let's see, that looks pretty good. I like to use the camera still because I can get it close and then I can do the final adjustments with the projector, the projecting, projection camera. I can't talk to it. All right, let's see how we did here. So I'm going to turn the projector on. And I'm going to bring it down. And I, I again, I'm sorry. I wish you could see this better because I can really see where the design is. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit because it was a little low. I think I moved it over a little bit too much. So I'm, go I'm going to move my camera. So now I can see over here. Yeah, it needs to come up a little bit. That looks better. Oops. Got a little overexcited here. Let's bring it down a little bit. Sometimes my machine moves really fast and sometimes it's really slow. So you have to be careful when you're pushing the button for the moving. Okay, let's bring, pull it down. I'm gonna look at the other corner. Okay, so I'm a little low yet. Looks pretty good. And then we'll try the other corner. But I found that I work with from the corners and it really helps. So I just pull my camera around and look to where see where my corners are. And I'm kind of still a little on the cockeyed side. So let's bring this down just a little bit. That's a little bit better, I think. So you can really get much more precise with this camera. It's amazing how much difference it makes. I've, I've really gotten so I use it a lot. Um, much more so than I ever thought. So here's my design. So I moved it with my projection camera so that I'm much happier with it. And remember, this one, I'm not going to sew that last step. I'm just going to sew the stippling. Okay. So I'm going to put my foot down. And we're ready to sew. And it's going to sew the stippling around this one. I am going to watch these corners, though, to make sure they don't get caught. So far, I've been very happy doing this. It's, it, the, the quilt was a bit of an undertaking. I won't lie. It, does, it did take me a while because there's a lot of blocks in it, and I just go in one block at a time. So the best way to do it is just be patient. It's fun to, learn, to play with the design center and make the blocks. And everybody's quilt is going to be totally different. You know, we're the a bunch of us did that quilt. There was like six of us, and I know everybody's quilt is going to look totally different because everybody's choosing different quilts and doing it a different way. So I, it's been really fun, and it's and this is the way I'm going to do all of these so that I can do the whole sewing like this. And then that border feature, that new border feature in the machine is really, really cool. So I hope to be able to do a class with that and do a table runner for those of you with the luminaires and the Solarises that have the up, that new upgrade because it is pretty awesome. So I'm just about done. So see, it took us about an hour and 15 minutes to to, um, to quilt this entire table runner. And make the design, and we made the designs to do it in, in that time too. So it's pretty neat. So it's getting around to the other side. It's just about done. So now I'll have another table runner. And that little ruching around the edges just really makes it. It's so cute. Okay. There we're done. So I'm going to take this out of the hoop. I'll just go ahead and pull this out now. And there is our table runner. 
you see the pretty stitches on it and there's the stippling on that end let me turn it over so you can see the back and then I'll trim this and put the little black and white polka dot binding on it isn't that cute and there's really not many knots on here Teresa see there's a little knot right here I don't know if you can see it there's a little knot right there that's where that little corner was and I'll just trim those up a little bit and um, you won't even notice them so what do you think is everybody going to try this that has these machines? It's so much fun. I've really enjoyed learning to do this. It's taken me a while to get the hang of it, but it's so much fun. So here's our finished table runner again. I'll show it to you again so you can see it with the binding on it. So I just trimmed it, and then I put the little ruching on, the little watermelons. And, yes, this is in the um, Hello Sunshine book, so if you – want the books and then everybody was asking me about Jingle All the Way. This is Jingle All the Way um, from Kimberbell and this is in the book with the quilt. And there's a couple of other really cute, cute pillows in there and stuff, but this one was done the same way and this one I used the little round circles in the center, see? Oh, the edge, that, that curved side um, Marsha, that edge where there's no satin stitch, that's where the ruching goes. So you, you leave that, it, you, this is what's going to go on there, that ruching right here, this stuff. It's a piece of fabric that you take a zigzag stitch, like a, a, a zigzag stitch like this, and then you pull it and gather it, and that's called ruching. I'd never done it before, but isn't that cute? So it turned out really cute, but that's what that is. That'll be on there. Okay. Yes, Broomhilda. So so that's how I'll do Broomhilda too, Lynn. And, you know, don't be afraid to try it. You know, just do, you know, do one block at a time. Get I just pin basted the whole quilt, and then I just started quilting. I didn't have, I had kind of a plan because I knew kind of what I wanted to do, but then I just, whatever hit me for each block, I just did. And my whole quilt is quilted. Now, if you haven't seen the Jingle All the Way quilt, I'll put a picture of it up. I've got a picture of it. And then it is hanging now in the store in Iowa City. I just hung it up on Friday. So it is hanging now. So you can see the whole quilt, and it's all the embellishments are on it now. So, okay. I saw the ruching app. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it cute, though? Isn't that darling? I'd never tried that. It, it says you're supposed to do all the ruching by hand, and I don't like that. So I just took the sewing machine with a real long stitch and did the zigzag down it. And then I pulled real careful, and then I just hot glued this <laughs> to the table runner. I don't, like, I don't like to hand stitch, so I hot glued it. But it turned out really cute. It's just going to be a sample, so I probably will never use it or never wash it. But look at the little watermelon seeds on the back. I thought it was that's, that's what my quilt's going to have on it, too. It's the watermelon seeds. So, okay. So are there any other questions? That's the thing, Teresa, you can quilt them right on your machine. You know, you've got all these beautiful stitches in this machine. Just quilt them. You'll be, you've got 36 um, different patterns now, all these different beautiful things you can use, and it's just amazing. So, I mean, it's so easy, and it, you just make a bunch of squares, and you just measure each block as you go, and that's how I did it. You know, just me measure each block. Make, you know, as you're doing them, you might need to make your blocks just a little teeny bit smaller to keep it from going over. But once you get the hang of it, it's so easy. It just takes a while. Okay? So, if there's no other questions, now next week, remember, is the dime event. So, we will not have class next Sunday because I'll still be cleaning up. And then the following Sunday, which is November, is it like the 2nd or something like that? Can you believe it's going to be November already? Um, November 3rd, we will not have class that night because I will be teaching the um, logo class on sessions on software on the Tuesday the 5th. So we will not have class for two weeks. Oh my gosh, we're going to go through withdrawal symptoms. So you'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to watch some of the older videos. And then we will have three, probably three weeks in a row. <laughs> hopefully with with without any other problems going on so um, with all these events and stuff it's hard for me to get everything done so okay so we won't have class next Sunday or the following Sunday but then I'll have the Tuesday night software class on the 5th I think it is yep Tuesday the 5th 
Okay, is there any other questions? Second, like we had a couple other comments. Make sure we didn't have any other questions. Thank you, everybody. So if you have if you have other questions about this, please let me know. And if you need to come down sometime, if some of you need to come to the store and have me go over it again with you, I'll be happy to do that. Design Center is so much fun. But you have this video now, so you can go back and you can see me do the work in Design Center. And it's so much fun to do it. So, okay. All right, so we will. I'll be seeing you soon. A lot of you are coming to the uh, Dime event. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be really fun. And um, we will do all kinds of fun stuff next weekend. So if you have any questions, give me a call. Talk to you later. Thanks, everybody. Good night.